Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Matt driving the Honda Accord Hybrid this week. And even if sedan are no longer the best seller out there, SUV are just eating the market. Well, guess what? There's more and more hybrid version of the nice sedan. So probably fuel efficiency, environment reason forces the manufacturer to go in, into that direction. Let's talk about the Accord. Well, the exterior, you can see that the wheels are different from a regular version. By the way, go check out the review that we did of that exterior of that Honda Accord Sport. It's not a big difference when you compare it to the hybrid, so it's gonna give you a really great ID. So you've got those small hybrid badges that you're gonna see around. It's still looking like a classical Honda Accord, but you will see also a big difference with those tires, 225, 50, 17, a Michelin Energy Saver AS all season tire, which are not my favorite because they don't give you that grip that you like. They are much more focused on fuel efficiency and how long they're gonna last. The interior is really similar, nearly identical. So once again, I'm gonna repeat myself, but go check out the review that we did of the interior of the, and the Accord right there in the card. But the big difference is gonna be the display right there on the cluster. You will see a needle telling you that you're in charge mode, that you're gonna be in full acceleration mode. So it's mainly the big difference with the screen right there on the center. Wow, I prefer a lot that Multimedia system when you compare it to the other one in the, in the lineup. Still, it's gonna give you some screens, some applications, some information on your fuel consumption and how full your battery is and where the energy is generated, the engine, the brakes, or the battery. Let's talk about the engine that you're gonna have in this car. And it's an hybrid powertrain, which is mated to an Atkinson cycle 2.0 liter in inline four cylinder, which is gonna be good for 143 horsepower and 129 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a permanent magnet synchronous AC electric motor, which is gonna be good for 181 horsepower, 232 pound-feet of torque, but you cannot add those number, combine, horsepower is gonna be rated at 212 horsepower. So it's not a lot, but it's what we're used into that segment. So the battery, 1.3 kilowatt hours, which is a lithium ion battery pack. And it's uh, right there in the back of the car. Even if you have the EV mode button, you won't be able to use it for a long time. Some people think that they can drive this car in only EV mode and fast, but that's not the case. I wonder why they even put some EV mode only button because as soon as you accelerate a little bit too much, there you go, it's going away. So the quarter mile is gonna be good for 15.5 seconds at 90 miles per hour, top speed 115 miles per hour, just barely shy of the 175 kilometers per hour. The rolling link, the 300 foot skid pad is gonna be good for 0.83 G. So it's not too bad considering the weight added to that car, but the tires doesn't help right here. Fuel consumption, 5.0 into town, 5.1 on the highway. You have to know that these cars are much more efficient when you will roll into city mode, when you've got a lot of red light, when you've got a lot of stop sign, when you're in traffic, you're gonna be able to use that regenerative energy from the brake and put it back into your battery. But when you're rolling on the highway, that's not where it shines. So it's still gonna be able to use that hybrid power system but it's not where you're the most efficient to bring back some energy into your batteries. So there is three instinctive mode to that EV driving car. The first one is an EV drive mode that you can use only with battery power. You've got a hybrid drive mode that uses electricity to propel the car with the gasoline engine powering the generator, giving some power into the battery. And the final one is an engine drive mode, which employ under certain condition that clutches the gasoline engine in a fixed ratio. The Honda Accord Hybrid has really its own personality. It's not sporty. It's even less sportier when you compare it to the 1.5 liter engine that you can get. By the way, it's 150 pounds and more heavy than the 1.5T. You've got the battery, which is under the rear seat. You've got also the tire. Once again, they're missing grip into cornering 
on wet surfaces, when it's going to get cold outside, you're going to be able to see how the weather affects a tire. And under those braking situations, well, the pedal feeling is kind of mushy and the distances are a little bit long when you compare it to the other on the card. Still, it's enjoyable. It's not too noisy, depending on your acceleration taste, because if you floor it, it's kind of buzzy. It's kind of annoying to always hear that engine at full revolution, trying to get you more speed. So there's no big minus points for this car. Otherwise, awesome fuel economy, it's powerful and it's comfortable for you and your passenger. There is a lot of competition out there still. The Chevrolet Malibu Hybrid, the Hyundai Sonata, the Ford Fusion, the Kia Optima. But the main contender is the Camry Hybrid. So let's do a little face off. So the Camry is going to be good for 4.9 into town, 4.8 on the highway. So combined numbers, 4.9. But this is for the base version of the Camry. If you go with an SC or XL e-hybrid, numbers go up 5.3 into town, 5.0 on the highway and 5.1 combined. So you see there's some difference with the numbers. So the Camry, the negative points, same as the Accord, the brake feeling, which is not really communicative. And why does the base model has more more fuel efficiency when you compare it to the most equipped version. So let's talk money. Let's do a cool comparison. Will you go normal or hybrid? Let's talk about your wallet. When will you get, as we say in French, kif kif, right there on the target to refill your wallet with the money you spend over a hybrid car because a lot of time it's much more expensive than a base version of a car. So you're going to tell me, yes, but Matt, you've got way more equipment in a hybrid car. Maybe, but a lot of time people choose this car for fuel efficiency. So that's the only thing that they care about. And it's the same thing for the environment. So less pollution out there. So let's compare base car with hybrid car. The difference that it's going to make in your wallet or simply to get back your money. How much kilometers will it take to put back that $5,000, $6,000 difference back in your pocket. So Accord, base price, CVT, I choose the same transmission though, okay? I probably cheated a little bit on that, but if I would have chosen the manual, the difference would have been way higher. So $29,660 for a base CVT Accord. If you go for the hybrid, 34,900. By the way, it's in Canadian price. If you want to do the test for the US, you will have the possibility to go edit the file that I've put in the description. So the price difference in Canadian is $5,240. That's major. The gas price that we have here, $1.30 per liter. So the fuel consumption of the hybrid is 5.1 combined. So usually there's two liter difference between the regular version and the hybrid versions. That's not really impressive. That's not a major improvement when you compare the two cars. So how many kilometers will it take to simply repay the difference of $5,240? Do you have the answer? $191,941 kilometers before you just buy back the money that you have spent more for a hybrid version. How about the Camry, the base Camry, which come automatic? The Ellie model is good for 28,834. If you go for the Camry hybrid, it's going to be 33,734. So you see it's less when you compare it to the Accord. So there's a $4,900 difference. Gas price, same one, $1.30. And the combined numbers is 4.9 liter per 100. So it's going to be 188,461 kilometers before you get back your spending with the hybrid Camry. So we did a file for you guys. Feel free to go play with it. We even added the Lexus hybrid that we tested this week. And my God, there's a big difference before you're going to repay yourself for that hybrid version that you will go for. So sometimes it's much more a statement toward the environment rather than a statement toward your wallet. So go see that file. You're going to see that one of the most affordable hybrid over a time period is going to be the Ford Fusion, is going to be the Hyundai Sonata. But still, we're going to do the exercise with a lot of many cars. 
please tell me which one you want to compare and we will adapt. So still right there in the description, go see that file. Also check out the full file where we compare cars. Do a thumbs up because you like that video. Subscribe to Car Question. We will see you another time. Take care.